Hi, I'm Holt McCallany, and you're watching Real Fans, Real Talk. Face facts, real talk. Real fans, real talk.com. Where Arthur Diamond's trip young and intern time for the white and black fans. Asia to Manhattan. I get all my facts from my bro, Mark the Stats Man. If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan. And if your brain checks out, then you deserve a backhand. Sports, gossip, all the hot topics. Real fans, real talk.com. Got it. They got the hottest bloggers. It's Jeremy Linhart. We'll log on to the site and you can hear it from them first. I'm talking about the latest. I'm talking about the greatest. Go check out the art. Cost. Even tell a neighbor, tell him Bobby sent ya From spring to winter, tuning in should be the only thing on your agenda Certified co-sign, you know what I'm about son Real fans, real talk.com, I'm out for Real fans, real talk, real fans, real talk Real fans, real talk.com, real fans, real talk.com uh, Real fans, real talk Real fans, real talk, real fans, real talk.com, real fans, real talk.com. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another live episode of Real Fans, Real Talk. I'm Mark the Statman Skevich. We got another great show lined up for you tonight. But before we get into that, let me introduce my co host. We have the one and only Trip Young joining us. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? You see the you see the pink today. You see that that means we representing for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. I know you might see some of your favorite NFL teams wearing the pink socks or the pink gloves or the ribbons or whatever. But real fans, real talk. We definitely supporting the, the breast cancer awareness research and all of that. Statman's gonna tell you about one of our previous charities that we actually had a little bowling tournament to raise some funds for breast cancer awareness, but. We're going to get into that in a little bit later. Sitting across from me, my man, Sean Fontaine. What's going on, fellas? All pink, everything. It is not about Cameron. It's about a good cause. <laughs> Breast cancer awareness, you know. Put on your pink uh, just to support. This is, this is a great cause. You know, we're here to support breast cancer awareness. Um, I had a great weekend, guys. How was your weekend? Weekend was pretty good. Pretty good, pretty good. All right, long weekend. All right, and as so. Tripp said, you get to see your, some of your favorite players wear pink, and you see your uh, favorite uh Sports, uh, I guess, not announcers, but sports commentators or whatever mm -hmm. you would like to call us, um, wearing pink as well. And like Trip Young said, last year, rolling for results 2012, we had uh, Bullmore Lanes Times Square. We want to thank Bullmore Lanes again for, for hosting and sponsoring that event because 100% of the proceeds went to the Breast Cancer Research Foundation which is a great cause for, for finding the cure. So uh, it was a great event last year. This year we're going to be doing another event for a different charity for uh, GDS, which uh, focuses on uh, children with mental illnesses. Uh, we'll have more information uh, for you guys on that. So make sure you check out realfansrealtalk.com under the charity section of the page for upcoming and previous charity events. And you could also donate still to the Breast Cancer Research Foundation through our website as well as the other charities that we deal with. But um, the Giants are looking for some charity. <laughs> they'll, 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 they'll take a win any way they get it. And uh, last week I had uh, my some of the crew members who happen to be Dallas Cowgirls fans say, oh, where's your Eli Manning jersey? You only wear it when they're winning. And I'm not that type of fan, so I brought out the Eli Manning jersey this week. I wear them no matter whether they're winning or losing. Diehard Giants fan, always will be. But, you know, we'll, we'll get into the Giants a little later on. We had some more recent games uh, th that happened. A little bit of an upset going on uh, yesterday in Monday Night Football. Myself, Trip Young, and Face Facts on the radio show, which airs Sundays at 7.30, realfansrealtalk.com. Um, picked the Indianapolis Colts and the San Diego Chargers. Uh, shocker. You know, somewhat of a shocker, but you know what? The San Diego Chargers don't stand out as like a dominant team. They haven't made the Super Bowl since 94 when Junior Seau was on the team. Uh, but they, the last uh, ten, nine out of ten seasons, they've had a winning season. So mm -hmm. they're they're not, you know, a Super Bowl contender. They're not one of the Titans out there. Mm -hmm. But they can, they are capable of pulling up an upset. And that was shown on Monday night. What was your thoughts on that one, Trip? Um, I mean, I guess I was was a little bit shocked by the end result of that game. But I mean, it just goes to show you, Andrew Andrew Luck is just uh, not all he's uh, cracked up to be. 
So he he's he got a lot. I of wouldn't work to I do. wouldn't go that far. I was yeah. one of the first to say that he was going to be overrated, and he showed a lot of throughout last season and this season that he is um, a, a top level quarterback, not an elite quarterback, but he's he's up there as one of the better quarterbacks in the league. He also um, has some really but, good receivers to throw yeah. to. But yeah. at the same time, you know the way they were making it seem before he came out there that he was the next John Elway and comparisons like that. I wasn't drinking that Kool Aid, <laughs> um, and I that's where I, uh, I came across as saying I think he's overrated, and everyone's like, "Oh, Andrew Luck is doing well." And you think about what they were before he got on the team. Peyton Manning told the ownership that you've got to be crazy not to take Andrew Luck. You know, you know how many more years does Peyton have? Andrew Luck has a lot more years, and he can only develop into a better player. To have that good of a rookie season, even though he was overshadowed by the stories of Russell Wilson, Colin Kaepernick, and RG3, he's still a, a, one of the top uh, sophomore quarterbacks out there. And he has the most uh, comeback victories in the fourth quarter or overtime since uh, the beginning, since his first game last year. So um, he couldn't get it done yesterday. I mean, those things do happen. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't think that it's a bad sign for Andrew Luck and the Colts. They still uh, have a have a good chance to make it into the playoffs and i think i think that they will i think they are a playoff contending team i think that the chargers just kind of wanted to show a message there that they're still a relevant team and it was on their home home field and they didn't they wanted to defend their home field and they did a good job of doing it. what's your take on it? yeah i mean they they were under the you know the the monday night spotlight and it was a lot of inconsistencies with the offense on uh, on the course behalf you know a lot of drop passes and they just wasn't able to you know, do do what they do on a on a week to week basis, and like you said, you know the Chargers they were playing at home and they had they had this swagger going on or whatever. But they have quietly been kind of doing their thing this year. You know, they they're sitting around three and three, so they're kind of in the middle. You know, they're in a, in a good place right now. But uh, Antonio Gates actually had some new life this season yeah. as well. Yeah, he had some good catches as well um, last night, so that helped out also. So we never know. But Andrew Luck, it still might be some luck for him. No, well, not. Uh, yeah, I, I think so too. I mean, he's in a division where the Texans are struggling. Yeah. You have uh, bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I have Schaub's jersey being burned by the fans, uh, which like, I don't know if the fans realize else. this, but that does not help your cause. You do not help <laughs> your quarterback win games. I think it was the second game of the season before they started. Maybe the they third get him out of before here. they started burning his jersey. <laughs> yes, I understand. I understand. I understand that Matt Schaub, he's not uh, Eli Manning, mm-hmm. Peyton Manning, you know, Aaron Rodgers, Drew Brees. He's none of those guys. But if you get rid of Schaub, who do you have out there? It's not like they're going to get Aaron Rodgers to come and play for them instead. So Chibos. why are you burning his jersey? Like, Joe Flacco wasn't that guy in Baltimore, and then one season he came out and he got the Super Bowl for him and he got the job done. Shaw well, was about Joe Flacco did take them to the playoffs every year, and he did yeah. have a pretty good. Well, playoff the te- record. they took them to the playoffs yeah. last year. The Texans. Yeah, well, so, lately yeah, they've been doing good. Yeah. You know, I guess they kind of tired yeah, of that. They're losing in the past or whatever. You and know? The, oh, in the years that that Shaw has been that quarterback since he replaced uh, David Carr, they haven't been going to the playoffs like that. The Ravens <laughs> have been to the playoffs pretty much every year. Yeah. Under Joe Flacco, that's that's a bit different. And he yeah, was taking well, them deep into the playoffs. Not just that's under Ray Lewis and and Ray Rice hey. more so than Joe Flacco, but. Um, well, he also had Andre Johnson and, and Arian Foster yeah. as well. Oh no! Well, the Texans have a great defense. I mean, that's and, one of and the they reasons. have a really yeah, good defense. No, overall, <laughs> but so so do the Ravens. But we're, um, my point is, you're not upgrading by going to Yates. I don't think, or you know. Oh no, they don't have any quarterbacks that come even that, close to the shop. It's not no, you know, T-ball? like do do you want them to? <laughs> we're not just throwing in two ball. Okay, we're not throwing in. We're not going into that. But. You, you, who do you put in there at that point? Like, what do you want yeah, they them to? They should have tried to get Johnson. To release Schaub <laughs> and lose the rest of the game so they could go into the draft listen, and hope to get nah. Johnny football. Listen, two. I mean, it's two, Texas A and M, and it's Houston uh, Texans, listen, so maybe that's what they want. That's like, a gamble, right? Two there. pick sixes ago, they should have picked up Josh Freeman. Yeah, <laughs> they didn't do that. So now, you know, you got to suffer with with Schaub. 
Um, but I don't think Josh Freeman was that much of an upgrade either. Yeah. But at the same well, from the other two backups that they're trying to oh, yeah, call for to, to but come in the, the game fans and play. really don't do themselves any favor by doing that. It's just affecting the team. And you saw, I mean, that's why those they add so much pressure to your quarterback. You're seeing yeah. your bur your jersey getting burned in yeah. the stands by the fans. Kind of you know what? What does that do for you mentally? A, you a lot of that, times, I think that's the reason for those pick six. Fans <laughs> become prisoners of of the moment and they don't realize what's going on all they see right now is oh he just don't four pick sixes and four consecutive games the, the team is losing but are you really looking at the fact that okay let's just say we take Matt Schaub out of the game who are we bringing it's in gonna make it that much worse to, to, to play exactly like because you're basically you're complaining because the team is losing yeah. so you want to go from Matt Schaub who is a good quarterback I mm -hmm. think he's just in a slump this season to a backup quarterback who is we does have, have nowhere near the skill set that, that Matt Schaub has yep. or the ability to do what he can do it's only going to get worse then you're going to be burning everybody's jersey after after you take Schaub so the fans can't even do a good job burning yeah. it they didn't yeah. put enough Light a like field or something on there. They didn't make any better. Like they got spanked last week by the Rams, too. So yeah. I mean, at least the ones that was running LeBron like here, at least they got it going. Yeah, these these fans are suck. Yeah. Right. I mean, they were prepped for that. Like, this was, this was kind of just, you know, oh, the shop. Spur just, of the moment. So you said yeah. take some notes from the fan and uh, fans Okay, there they go. They got it. They got it. They got it. Yeah, the Ohio fans, no pain over there. Yeah. Call up some of those Cavalier fans and ask them how to burn the jersey because that's not getting it. I thought he had it, bro. And that was that, look, that looks like the tailgating area too, so I'm pretty sure yeah. somebody had one the of those. Fans can't do like... anything right. <laughs> exactly. And they want to complain about shop, they can't even burn a jersey right. Mm -hmm. But uh, there were other fans out there burning jerseys too. Those, those fans obviously Yeah, you know they <laughs> might it's a sad it's a sad day. It's a sad day. Oh, there, there you go, there you go. Now, 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 now you got, got it. it. Yeah. Now you got it. Hands are doing good. The players are right. doing good. Every, it's just all bad all together. <laughs> they had to go get the lighter fluid. Somebody was grilling time. on the other you know, side. They and, and burning and, and you know what they made? And, 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 you know, you got to give them time to progress. Yeah. And, 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 and they may have had too many uh, too many uh, cores lights because it looked like they went into the target yeah. area too. So that might have something to do with it. But they're delusional nonetheless. Hey, it happens. What are you going to do? I mean, Sean, I know you've been looking forward to talking about the <laughs> Sunday night game because the Dallas Cowgirls do beat the division rival uh, Washington Redskins and uh, they seem to ha have a handle on somewhat of a handle on the NFC East because of the struggles of the New York Giants mm -hmm. and Washington wet Redskins. Uh, the, but they the, do the, lose the Marcus Ware for three to four weeks. We do, and, but uh, we Marco are. Marco Murray is also going to be out this next game. This is true. This your is best, true. This is best true. The Marcus Ware might even be their best player. True. This is. And it's gonna be a rough one. And we are playing the Eagles this coming week too. So that's you yeah. know, That's that. that so who we'll, the lose the the winner will take yep. sole possession of first place. And it kind of sucks because it's like bittersweet for me because obviously I want the Giants to to win the division, <laughs> but I genuinely hate the Philadelphia Eagles. So I would rather the Cowboys beat the Eagles. Wow. In, in that game, just because I don't want to have to hit it, hit it, hit the Eagles fans. See, but I'm talking about Cowboys versus that, Eagles. That's, that's it. True, that's true. That's true. Like, I just have a hatred for the Eagles, so I don't want to see them come in. I do close. hate the Eagles more than I hate the Cowboys, yeah. but for the Giants' sake, you would obviously want the Eagles to win because you think that, you know, the Eagles will most likely lose more games the rest yeah. of the season than the Cowgirls will. Yeah, but I don't want to give Eagles fans any kind of room to, to be able to talk smack because – once they get that sole position of first place, yeah, we, we would never right. hear, the, hear the end of it. I, 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 I can take Sean Fontaine coming in here talking about the Cowgirls. Yeah. and when I, can, I can take that, but I cannot take Eagles yes, fans. I, I know which Eagles fans you're yeah, they, 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 they have not well. done, done anything. You know what I mean? Because at least I can, what I can say about the Cowboys, the Cowboys as a franchise, they do have Super Bowl championships. Yeah. The Eagles have not done anything they as a Campbell franchise. They have commercials. I'd so, rather well, be, I'd rather uh, be, well, so that's Donovan McNabb's hey, trophy. Man, yeah. there you go. <laughs> Campbell's there soup. you go, Campbell's Super. Campbell's Chunky. So. All right, no more Super for you. But, but yeah. speaking of not hearing the end of it, though, uh, Jerry Jones came out with a statement after last week's game. Cop out. <laughs> that last week's game against the Denver Broncos and said that it was a moral victory. How do you feel about that, you, Sean, as the Cowgirls you, fan on you, the panel? You know what? As the Cowboys <laughs> fan on the panel, I, f I feel like that was a cop-out. I mean, Tony Romo has done this time in and time out. Uh, you know, he, he's had us in a place where we can win a game and then we end up throwing at the end. And, and for me being a fan for all these years, to back to Emmitt Smith and all those days or whatever, it's kind of like what, you don't expect anything 
you ex you expect that from him, you know, at this point. So by him throwing that interception that deep, that late in the game, it was like, come on, man. It's Come on, man. It, what we say? You played to win the game. <laughs> yeah. But as far as the statement, though, yeah. Jerry Jones' statement. It was a cop-out. It's Romo being Romo. You don't, you don't like the nah, fact that he said I, that. I feel, I feel like he, he did that to, you know, help out his morale, you know, help out yeah. his mindset. I mean, I don't. And, I don't, it, and it went to backfire him because he got yeah. eaten alive by the media and the fans for saying it. But yeah. someone like me who watches football and is not a Cowgirls fan, I see it as, you know, I'm agreeing with Jerry Jones because – they went up against a Super Bowl contender, the odds-on favorite to win it all this year, and the Denver Broncos, the way Peyton Manning is playing. And they went and had a shootout against them, yep. against that Denver Broncos defense, scoring the most against the Broncos this year Nine and having points. the closest chance to beating them. So, with but, the, well, with the Broncos defense it isn't that good. They'll be a lot better because Von Miller will be back this week. That suspension mm -hmm. is over with. But the, the 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 Broncos defense isn't that well. Champ Bailey just came back mm -hmm. uh, this this past week, so they're gonna they they're gonna good in the they're gonna start to, the to get better. Game. But well, because the, the Cowboys. One thing about the Cowboys is, is they do have an offense that can light it up. Yeah. Okay, you got Des Bryant out there. You got Demarco Murray, who's who's a great running back. Right. So they do have an offense that if if you're caught slipping, and and, and Romo can throw the football. He's mm -hmm. no slouch at quarterback. He just he stops performing in, in, yeah, in, in, in the in the, the fourth quarter. Well, yeah, when, when it matters. The, yeah, when the game is on the line, then when we the see again the Romo ball. Romo being Romo. So so you know. I gotta see. I gotta see them. Uh, you know, against one of the top defenses, do that. But it just, it just doesn't look good because right now, looking at the NFC East, the Cowboys are the favorite to win the division. But I don't look at the Cowboys, even if they win the division, as a team that can make any noise in the playoffs no, because I can't count on Tony Romo to perform in a clutch situation in the playoffs. And we've seen, I mean, going back to the days of the, the holding the, 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 the football and, and he misses the, yeah. you know, for that, for that field goal that would have won the game for them in the playoffs, you know, it's just, I don't know what it is, but in those pressure situations, he doesn't do well. You know, you know what's funny about that statement? I have to agree with you on that. Even going back to those years where the Giants barely made the playoffs, Eli still didn't have that same reputation to where he, like, you know, fumbled in the, in, the, in the pivotal times of the game. And he just had brain farts, you know, in times when he didn't ha need to have or whatever. So I don't, I don't know. I'm having a brain fart there because I don't remember that ever happening. No, I, I just remember him hosting up Super Bowl. Yeah, but, that, but that's what I'm I mean, saying. That's but that's what, what I'm saying. Like, like, with them barely but, getting into the playoffs, you know, I would I would put my money on him versus Romo because oh yeah, of course yeah just just because well, of the, you know, that's the reputation. difference we talk you know two two different kinds of quarterbacks with, with Eli Manning he struggles during the regular season he he is that type of quarterback and that's why people you know when you make those comparisons with Eli and Peyton whereas you see Peyton in the regular season is the best of the best, you know, arguably between him and Tom Brady mm -hmm. this over this past decade. Eli Manning, he's gonna he he'll throw for four thousand yards, but he might throw twenty interceptions yep. or you know, he'll have some bad games. But once the playoffs comes around, you see a different Eli Manning. And that's what we don't get from Tony Romo well, when the playoffs come around. I'm gonna have to address those interceptions because every you know, the past couple this season it looks like he's on pace to have over twenty again. Um, <laughs> the right last now, right? time he had over twenty <laughs> was the same thing where more than half of them were off of his receiver's yeah. hands and you know that's something that you know is not in the stat book it's not yeah. it's not there and there's and, you know and I and I do understand that stat man but at the end of the day we know that that's where those interceptions go they mm -hmm. go on Eli's stats so you know we still got to count them count them as, as Eli's interceptions but I mean again when you go into the playoffs Eli Manning is feared in the playoffs. Yeah, no man. one fears Tony Romo come playoff time because it's just it's expected. You know, at some point he's gonna throw away the game yeah. for the Cowboys. And and, and 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 I mean, it's sad to say for Cowgirls fans because that's what you guys have to deal with. And but they're used to it. He just see with yeah, the, I mean, he I mean, just got that that that, that 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 good check. Yeah. He got a, he got an increase. He got some extra years <laughs> added onto his contract. And Our it's Cowgirls like Cowgirls comrade over oh, here. Yeah, yeah. He is he is a, a good quarterback. He's yeah. a really good quarterback. Back. And he showed it, you know, against the Denver Broncos, throwing for 500 yards and four touchdowns. But you have to be able to close yep. the game. Right, well, speaking of closing, uh, Eli Manning has, I mean, excuse me, Peyton Manning has uh, one Super Bowl less than Eli Manning. And um, 
the Broncos. I'm, I'm going to throw out the question there now. What are the chances of Peyton Manning having an undefeated season? They are the favorite to win it all this year. They're undefeated as of right now. What do you think as far as uh, the Broncos going undefeated and winning it all? It's definitely possible. No, all. I'm not. I don't know Let's about. Let's say not, over or under twenty percent. It's oh no, it's, it's over a twenty percent chance that they will go undefeated during the regular season. Now again, going back to my previous statement, Which is where we have two too. different types of quarterbacks in, in the playoffs. Season quarterback in the playoffs. Peyton Manning in the playoffs is not a, a top two quarterback in the playoffs. Nope. Whereas career-wise, regular season, I, I would say Peyton Manning is arguably, I'd say arguably top three of all time, regular season. But when the playoffs come around, he struggles. You know, and people want to say, oh, well, he didn't have a defense. He didn't have that. Well, what does that have to do with the interceptions that he throws mm -hmm. in the playoffs? The only years that he couldn't get past Tom Brady, you know, he, he, he in the playoffs, I don't know, we see a different side of Peyton Manning, which, so I can't say in the playoffs. Now, regular season, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's I would say, over 70% chance, especially now that Von Miller's back, Champ Bailey is back, and, and with the way they've been playing, looking at, at, at the, the upcoming games, I think they could, could go undefeated in the regular season. But again, last year they played great, and they ran into the Baltimore Ravens in the playoffs, and they were a heavy favorite to, to win that game at, at home. So, you know, I, I would say a regular season, yes, it could, it could happen. Playoffs, it's 50-50 with, with Peyton, whether they could run yeah. the table in the playoffs. I think if you, if you said uh, over under 40, I would probably say no because, I mean, this, this is a dating time that we are in with sports right now. I don't see any teams really going undefeated. But over under 20, I'm going to say yes. Um, Peyton, I mean, they, they seem to put up, what, 30, 40, 50 points on most of these teams or whatever, and I don't really see anybody stopping them right now, so I can definitely see them being undefeated well, in, the, in the regular season. There's two undefeated teams right now. That's the Kansas City Chiefs and the Denver Broncos. They're both in the same division, <laughs> which means they have to play Somebody, each other twice, yep. and they haven't played each other yet. Yep. Uh, technically, the Kansas City Chiefs are in the lead in that division because of more uh, – um, more uh, road wins, I think, the way the playoffs, because they both have the same division wins. They both have the same conference wins. Um, mm -hmm. Not sure where the tiebreaker goes. I mean, there's 35 different tiebreaker scenarios when it comes to the playoffs going as far as a coin flip. But as of right now, the Kansas City Chiefs are, are ahead. So, I, I mean, I take the Broncos and both of them winning it. I do agree with you guys over 20% in the playoffs. But once it comes down to crunch time, once it comes down to the playoffs, will Peyton Manning, you know, be like his uh, little brother uh, Eli Manning, and that's only uh, little bro. That's yeah. you know. it's, it's a big difference. But even I, I again, I do think they will beat the Chiefs because the Chiefs' defense is is really good. But are they good enough to stop the best offense? in the league and that's where the problem is yeah. Peyton will still put up his his numbers and Alex Smith is not going to win any kind of shootout yeah. with Peyton Manning or most other quarterbacks in in the league he's not going to win a shootout with so the problem with with that is if they go behind early which you we all know Peyton Manning can put points on the board will they be able to then catch up to yeah. the Denver Broncos Definitely and I don't think that, that they can. If they go down by 14 points to, to, to the Denver Broncos <laughs> early, you can pretty much call it a ball game. All right. Well, speaking of uh, having shootouts, well, we got a hypothetical shootout here uh, for with one of our fan mail questions. Uh, Tony from Chelsea writes, whom would you guys rather have starting a quarterback for your team, Tom Brady or Drew Brees? I got to go with Drew Brees. I mean, I got to – I mean, he's – right now, if you're picking somebody, Tom – Drew Brees has more years left in him than Tom Brady does, I think. And the 5,000-plus yards per season the past couple of years, he's been outperforming Tom Brady with what I feel is less talented of a receiving core – uh, because you, the past couple of years, I, mean, I know Tom Brady had some bad receiving years, but he did have last year, he had Gronk and Hernandez, and we see that without those guys this year, he's not doing anywhere near as well as he normally does. And he doesn't have Wes Welker anymore either, so uh, I got to say 
Drew Brees. I know Tom Too Cool is your guy, and so I'm not sure. Uh, Trip Young, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah I'm <laughs> definitely gonna pick Tom. First of all, I mean, what, did, what he did, what he did uh, on Sunday in itself the that comeback. just that, that play to win the game. But I mean, if you want to talk about 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 having receivers out there, Tom Brady has probably done the most throughout his career without having any receivers. Um, he didn't have until he got Randy Moss. That was Randy Moss was the first time he actually had a top ten wide receiver, yeah, and he was still tearing tearing through the through the leagues. He's he's good. But that's Deion Brandt. Nobody's which, really talking about Deion exactly. Who, who, who was Deion Brandt? He's 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 good. But I mean, Drew Brees. You know, look at all of the all of the offensive weapons that that Drew Brees has around him, and. Look at what Tom Brady ha has done this season. Just this season. Look what, what he's done. Weapons? His team I'm is. I'm not impressed with his. You're not impressed board. with Jimmy Graham, who's <laughs> leading the league and receiving yards. Yeah, but I don't think that. Probably as, playing as the best right wise, now. Talented wise, he's he's a top ten overall receiver. It's, uh, Jimmy Graham is is definitely a top five tight end. But talking about him, fantasy, if you put, if you put him <laughs> if you put him on the same team with Alex Smith, he's not getting those numbers. Oh. Yeah, but it's a little. You can put. He's put him not on a lot Andre of Johnson, like if, you know. Okay, if we, if if, if you if you Calvin if you Johnson switch Drew Brees with, with with Tom Brady and give Drew Brees the receivers that Tom Brady has, is he going to throw for five thousand yards with those receivers? With last year's receivers, here yeah. we go. Here yeah, we go. Yeah, with last year's happen. receivers, here we go. Okay, that rests my case. Thank but you. He's doing Thank better you. than Tom Brady Thank is now because Tom Brady doesn't doing have last year's receivers the, either. And, and, and he's still winning, still winning games, yep. and, and he just beat beat Drew Brees' teams. Even though I know he plays the defense, but hey, right, he still was able to get his team down your, the field to win the game. Yeah, I'm going with Tom too cool, man. That that lack thereof of uh, of the receiving core, the depth or whatnot, and and them still winning. I've been preaching that about Eli Manning for the past Eli Eli. Well, right. yeah, but then now you can't say it this year because they own six right now. Yeah. I, I, I agree with you on but that. He's still, he, he's still he's, making completions, and it's his. The, the interceptions are his receivers' fault, which man. which adds to my most, case. Uh, most of them are. But again, Tom Brady doesn't have any receivers this year, and he's not leading the league in interceptions. They're not. It's not bouncing off their hands. He's not having <laughs> the the opposite of uh, luck of Andrew Luck. But moving along, uh, we did have a fight this past Saturday. Uh, Timothy Bradley against Manuel Marquez. Uh, we kind of felt Marquez was going to win that one. Uh, it could have went either way in the fight. Marquez felt he got robbed. Like I said, it could have went either way. Bradley uh, ends up getting the Marquez victory. Marquez always getting robbed. Yeah, and, <laughs> and Bradley, he the man now. Too. Uh, yeah. Anytime it's a close call, the the you know the box of cries foul. I mean, yeah, it was, it was, it was scored. He 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 didn't do he didn't do enough to win. He was in control of the fight early on, but in those later rounds, uh, Timothy Bradley yeah, turned it up, and he, the last he, round when yeah, he got the biggest punch. Exactly, in the fight and you and that Marquez. that sways the judges when you start picking up, you know, midway through the fight, and then you mm -hmm. continue to control the fight throughout the end of the fight. That that just sways the judges, and that's what they're gonna do. And it was a split decision, so it could have it could have gone either way. I don't think that that Marquez got robbed in the fight. I I thought you know. Do you think Bradley should have gotten robbed since he robbed Pacquiao? <laughs> well, only if he was fighting Pacquiao. <laughs> the referees tend to do that <laughs> yeah. in basketball plus, and other and sports and kind of make a, a oh, make up. Oh, make up, yeah. make up, yeah. yeah. And one of the, one of the one of those the judges for that fight actually took a, a, a indefinite leave of absence. And we spoke about it a couple of weeks ago yeah. after the the Mayweather Alvarez, Alvarez fight. Yeah, yeah. So, but no, nah, only if he was going against Pacquiao. Which you know, I would like to like to see that fight happen again, especially he now. He should have been investigated to see if he was taking bribes. That guy, because yeah. I don't know how he well, that, scored that, things that the girl. way he did. But well, well, Bradley, yeah. well, Bradley and um, Pacquiao are promoted by the same people. So you think it's one of those little wrestling things where it's like, hey, you win this one, and then I'm gonna let you win the next one. You know how that goes. <laughs> well, it, it's, quite, it's quite like the Harbaugh brothers did right? with the Woo! Super Bowl. Oh, you're not taking that Quan Bowling. Yeah. <laughs> It's too bad it's not, not working out all that great. Just for a bag of Lay's but, potato chips. <laughs> <laughs> but saying friend. But, yeah. And a beer. But he, he just, he <laughs> now he's over, overly cocky right now, Timothy Bradley, you know, without cause because, to be honest, he really right he is undefeated. But outside of 40-year-old Juan Marquez yeah. in a split decision, 
who has he has has he beaten? A bunch of guys in uh, except for, Ali, except for, except for, except for Pacquiao. Oh, but he beat Pacquiao. Legitimately beat yeah, he did. He did beat. He beat Pacquiao. Hall of Fame <laughs> statement that he made. Yeah, just crazy. Oh, that that was his yeah. Hall of Fame yeah. fight. Now nah, he has to get like this fight cemented. You know, yeah. it's my ticket to the whole, uh, the boxing. Yeah, now he has to get no, into no. the ring with, with Mayweather and take his whoopings now. So <laughs> Mayweather maybe can you bring know, him back you know, down. Like he might have met. He probably bet somebody. If I win this fight, you buy me the ticket so that. Oh, you okay, yeah, single, and, yeah, and take pictures like. You yeah, know. I think this is just him talking because he want to fight Mayweather. Yeah, well, he got to build up the fight. He's trying too. to get that money, man. That's what yeah. that is. Well, he's still not gonna get that nothing crazy to fight Mayweather anyway. Mayweather's gonna yeah. get the get the check. He gonna get like the, the, the table scrap yeah. whatever's left over, cause he's still he's not he's he's not uh, that big of a draw, even after beating Marquez like that. Definitely. You know, just because people still, for the most part, feel like he should have one loss on his record anyway, cause he should have lost to Pacquiao. So you know well, he, he is undefeated and he can if it, maybe we'll see that fight uh, against Mayweather and he could get schooled and make it look. To be like, honest, I don't like think he wants child. to. You know, he, so he, I mean, he wants to fight Mayweather. Work, but you get you, your lifetime paycheck right there. Well, in a fight. Yeah, hey. just for that alone. <laughs> you know, the right thing with the, with the, the with that check. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. So I mean, that that that, that would be a good a good look for him. He's got to make money at least wise. twenty million to take that, and then he never has to fight again. Well, maybe I don't even think he gets. I mean, Alvarez only got twelve million to fight. Oh, okay. To fight Alvarez Mayweather. is a bigger name. Yeah, yeah so he's so. not he's not going to get right. that. That well. that's all. I mean, even after beating Marquez, Between now five and if, ten million if, is enough if he, for if me he, to fight him. If he goes Mayweather, down, calling you out. Right. And, uh, five mil. Fights, what you do? Uh, fights the winner of Brandon Rios, uh, Pacquiao. I mean, really, and this is contingent on if Pacquiao wins, and then he would go then and fight Pacquiao in a rematch and beat Pacquiao. Then he could probably get up to twelve, fifteen million dollars, I think. But he still has to, to to do that first because everyone looks at that as some BS. Basically, you didn't <laughs> you didn't win the fight. It was clear that you didn't win the fight. They even had a second set of judges after the fight rescore the fight. None of which gave the fight to That's Timothy sad. Bradley. None, none of the announcers yeah, the associate gave. Press score to 115, yeah, one thirteen, I believe. Yeah, so none of the announcers that was there gave the fight to to to, to Bradley. So you have to really avenge that before you start talking about you a Hall of Famer now. And and you wanna you wanna take it step in the ring with the yeah, big dogs like gonna, Mayweather. He gonna do it and get knocked out. That's fine. It's gonna be some old uh, Mike Tyson action where we pay for this fight. <laughs> you get knocked out the first round. But from from a promoter standpoint, he beat Manny Pacquiao. He beat Manuel Marquez, and like that's you know the Marquez even one. Though yeah. we know that he didn't yeah. really beat Pacquiao, on paper he did. And, you know, not everyone follows boxing in depth. Like, not all the, pay especially the people that buy pay-per-views. Like, yeah. they don't, they, they you know, look at the, at the big fight. They, watch they the big see, fights. you know, just just that alone in a promotion, in an advertisement. He mm. beat uh, Pacquiao. He beat Marquez. Yep. Yeah. Next is Mayweather. They'll, like, they'll, they'll, they'll buy pay-per-views. They pay can sell that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Is, so. he gonna, is, he gonna, is he gonna break the, the Alvarez uh, Mayweather record? Oh, no. No, no not by far. That's because of but, Alvarez's yeah, but they can sell that. They, yeah, they can, popularity. They can, like, they can, they can I mean, I wanted to watch the fight this past Saturday at a friend's house. He wasn't even sure who was fighting. <laughs> and knew that, you know, it was yeah. a, kind of a big fight, but I had that Mayweather, same, that same <laughs> Mayweather wasn't one of the names. <laughs> yeah. so and I was like, like, who? Hey man, yeah. he might get oh, I said I said Marquez. They knew they knew Marquez. I was actually uh, in uh, Brooklyn at the firehouse yeah. downtown Brooklyn. He's like, yeah, we know I Marquez, said, but Bradley. Bradley's the guy right. who beat Pacquiao. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's what he was. Oh, I know Pacquiao, and then everyone just like, I know yeah. Pacquiao, but uh, they, they don't know who Bradley is. That you know, the casual boxing fan won't won't know him. But again, if he goes and then you know. Obviously, it's contingent on if Pacquiao can beat Brandon Rios. He goes back, has a rematch with Pacquiao, and beats Pacquiao. Then, I, you know, then then that draw would would go up because then people will be like, all right, well, he didn't beat him last time he got robbed, but this time he clearly beat uh, Manny Pacquiao. So I guess. You know, we can't kind of don't take any point pointers from Oscar De La Hoya because yeah, don't, don't do that. again. Don't do that. That, that, that just doesn't work. That does not work. Golden um, boy. And don't have Freddie Roach train you either because Freddie Roach 
has trained many of fighters that have tried to beat well, uh, Floyd Mayweather, and it hasn't happened yet. So my one thing, yeah, my well, I can't blame that on Freddie Roach, bro. You are fighting <laughs> no, Mayweather. No, so. you gotta get listen. Whichever who who's ever training Mayweather, if it's gonna be his father or his uncle, whichever one's not training Mayweather, that's who you get to train you I'm to not fight. Sure if they do that, though, like, listen, but. you gotta have to give him at least ten million from your from your you know from your purse for the fight. Yeah, but Alvarez only got twelve. <laughs> he said. Well, listen, you wanna win or you wanna win? I'm, I'm just hey, trying to help you out. That's an easy payday. Yeah, but that doesn't guarantee you a victory either. So you're gonna end up getting only two out and out of twelve million and, and still lose the fight. Listen, I'm trying. I'm, I'm trying to come up with suggestions. Well, yeah, if he's I, smart, I, I, I saw smart, a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> if he's smart, he go put some money on Mayweather too. Yeah. Oh yeah. All right. Fight. It's, okay. If he if he pays whoever's not gonna train Mayweather ten million and then the other two million bets on Mayweather, boom, he can't lose. That is it. He, he can't lose in that in that situation. That is it. Well, uh, other than <laughs> going to jail for a bad <laughs> that you're fighting hey. against. Well, that is listen, it. And, and plus, you don't get good odds on Mayweather. So, but well, anyway, listen, right, I'm sorry, man. I, I'm I'm trying here, right? I I, I got you, but um, <laughs> we, we talked about the uh, the MLB playoffs, Boston and the Detroit Tigers last week on the show. The Tigers were playing live. And I said that I felt, you know, I picked the Tigers to make it to the World Series out of the American League. They ended up making the comeback from the game that was on the air last week and then winning the next game, game five against Oakland, and still taking it. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm pretty uh, excited that my prediction, I said I, at the end of the show, I said I hope that I'm wrong because uh, Detroit was down, mm -hmm. uh, because I'm not a Detroit fan, because they've been known to, to knock out the Yankees out of the playoffs before. Um, so I'm not really exactly a Detroit fan. But now I'm definitely rooting for Detroit, oh, no because <laughs> they are playing Boston. Mm -hmm. They ended up beating Boston in game one. And we had this shot-for-shot shot question this past Sunday on, the, on our radio show, which airs every Sunday, 7.30 p.m., RealFansRealTalk.com, Blog Talk Radio Network, archived on the iTunes Store. Which uh, team from the Blockbuster trade last year, the Dodgers or the Red Sox, have a better chance of winning? Now, the Dodgers were down two games. I picked the Dodgers. Trip Young gave me the point for that one. Also because I felt that, you know, Detroit took game one in Fenway, um, as opposed to St. Louis taking the first two at home, and now it's in L.A., and uh, as, yeah, as we right saw now. after my, my prediction, both Boston and, and the Dodgers end up winning. But I still think Detroit is the tougher team to beat. And I think that the Dodgers will come out. I still say a, a Detroit, L.A., Overall. which was Even my Detroit prediction from the game. Even though Detroit did blow the, 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 the game the other night, the, the bullpen, you know, after Gus um, pitched, a, pitched a, a great game, they came in and just started snagging them. Yeah, and then I don't know what happened. David Ortiz looked like he was back on the sauce the way he was sitting <laughs> in slams. So I don't know what was going on there, but um, they are they are playing again. Uh, of of course, they will be playing while we're on the air right now. And uh, Verlander is actually pitching versus John Lackey. It's still tied um, at, at zero right now. Neither in the top neither, of the six. Yeah, neither team has scored, and. Um, Verlander's only giving up one hit. Lackey's giving up three, but it's a very close game. Of course, you know, I know you guys would rather be watching real fans real talk. That's why we're going to give you the score, just so you don't, you know, have to turn the channel real quick or anything and watch the score. Cause no, there's, there's no game going on right yeah. now. Yeah, <laughs> uh, never mind. It. Yeah. It's on the uh, other network that you don't get somewhere. <laughs> um, Something they blocked on your cable. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> we you change the channel, we'll send you a virus through your cable box. So. <laughs> we, um, we actually, we had a situation last week on the show. That we did. Where we had shot for shot, and we were tied up, and we finished the show tied up with shot for shot. I'm not going to mention no names or point no elbows, <laughs> but somebody couldn't come up with any bonus round shot for shot questions. So... We we have to we have to jump back in the shot for shot for the for the tie the the, the tiebreaker of game now of shot for shot and uh, Fontaine you will be judging this week again and I've actually I pulled a couple of extra fan mail questions out for Sean Fontaine to use as bonus questions just in case we go into overtime again this week so I think he should be good. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. All right. So, uh, so I'm, I'm running off all the questions and all right. So it's on me. All right. So, uh, first shot for shot question. 
Well, you first have to get in uniform. That's number one. Which Philadelphia quarterback gives the Eagles the best chance at winning the games? Now, who answered first last? Well, I'm still the champ, so. I don't know if that works that way. <laughs> yeah, I'm still, I'm still, still, I'm still, still a champ. We're just continuing overtime, it does, I'm still a champ. This is uh, well, I'm the... still going to say Mr. Glass, Michael Vick. Um, he's, he's the veteran. He's, he's the, an elusive quarterback. I, I got to go. I think Michael Vick is still t more talented overall, but he just never stays healthy for a season. But if he's healthy, I go with Michael Vick. Yeah, I, I got to agree. Plus, that offense is, is designed for a quarterback like Michael Vick. So I would agree. Michael Vick definitely gives them the best chance to win. Even though Nick Fol uh, Foles played some good football, you know, his past game and a half. But um, long term, it would be Michael Vick. Yeah, I, I have to agree with you guys. I guess the, I think the players they they're backing Vic. I mean, overall, I think you know Nick Foles. He has a better uh, quarterback rating or whatever. But who's to say that's going to continue? And like you said, the offense is catered to Michael Vick. So that is a tie. Next question: Which team is most likely to reach the Super Bowl, the Patriots or the Saints? Um. You know what? I'm going to I'm going to say the Patriots have uh, have, have are more likely to to reach the Super Bowl because I feel like the top teams in the AFC can be beat in the playoffs and that's the Denver Broncos and that's the Kansas City Chiefs right now whereas in the NFC it's gonna it's gonna one be determined by home field advantage if if the if the Saints have to play the Seahawks if they don't play the Seahawks in New Orleans I don't think they make it to the Super Bowl but if they play the 49ers either way I think that the 49ers can uh, can can knock off the off the Saints uh, I think that the Packers I know they got some injuries right now but I, I think that they can beat the Saints in the playoffs I think it's just it's just more teams in the NFC I feel like that can knock off the Saints in the, in the playoffs whereas in the AFC I think that the, the Patriots come playoff time especially getting uh, Gronkowski back and, and Amendola back I mean they're, they're playing amazing football right now at five and one but you you know you give you give uh, Tom Brady some receivers and that that boy puts up some 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 numbers so I, I would say the Patriots so it's that I'm gonna say um, the Saints I, I don't think either one of them is making the Super Bowl <laughs> but let's just put it that way but I think the AFC is more clear-cut that you might as well hand the AFC championship to the Denver Broncos the way they're playing and I don't think that any team including the Patriots have shown anything capable even with adding Gronkowski back um, that they're gonna be capable of beating the Broncos so I'm gonna have to go with the, uh, the Saints on this one mm. you know until you threw that out there I was going to say the Patriots just because of, you know, how they've been producing, you know, with their lack thereof. And then it seems as though they have an easier road. But the teams that you, those teams do kind of make it harder for them to make the Super Bowl. So I'm going to think that. Which teams are you referring to? You, you said the. Uh, the the, the Broncos? Broncos? Yeah, the Broncos. Yeah. I mean, the AFC and championship and is going to be at Broncos and somebody Payton else. versus and Tom Brady's record in the playoffs. That's. A whole different yeah, I, mean, I, mean, I definitely don't think the Saints are going to go to the Super Bowl either, but I think they might have a better chance of getting into the, getting a little further in the playoffs, I guess, or getting to the Super Bowl, like the question says, than the Patriots right now, because they, they haven't really had anybody in these players that the they Saints have. The Saints had to deal with their other off-the-field issues with suspensions last year and still made a run winning most of their games to almost even make the playoffs last year. Now those suspensions and all the off-the-field drama is over. And they're, they're a contender again. They're, Drew Brees is a Super Bowl champion not too long ago, and he's still capable of doing it again. So Yeah, and, um, and Tom, too cool. I feel like the Patriots kind of been squeaking by a lot of teams, too. So I, it hasn't really had, you know, really put in my mind that they can just, you know, take it the long way. Um, so, Statman, you win that one. Uh, which team 
Which undefeated, no, which team, hold on. Which team will lose first, the Broncos or the Chiefs? I'm going to go with the Chiefs. I mean, I think we probably most likely both agree on this one that, you know, eventually the Broncos are going to be playing the Chiefs and the Broncos are going to win that battle. And, um, you know, even if, if on the way before that, uh, the Broncos, I just don't see them losing. Yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> Because they mentioned they're going to have to play each other, and I think the Broncos will beat the Chiefs. But I do think that the Chiefs, you know, both teams actually will be undefeated. I, I think it's four more weeks before they play each other. Yeah, but I, so I think both teams will be undefeated until then. But we shall see. Yeah, I, and, I, and I think once it comes time for them to play, that they're not, he's not going to be able to outgun Peyton. So oh, no, not, not at all. <laughs> not not, not yeah. at all. It's not going to be close. So, um, all right, next question. Which Boston star is more clutch, Tom Brady David Ortiz or Rajon Rondo? That's a rough one. <laughs> I hate even, I mean, Tom Tuchel's the only, only person in, in Boston that I even really like giving props to the other two. I just can't stand either way. But, uh, ah, who's in my clutch? <sighs> this was like five years ago, I was definitely. So it's really between David Ortiz and Rondo. Oh, you know what? <laughs> nah, this is rough. This is rough. It's like you about to jump out the window on this I one. Oh, I, I, I feel like I am, man. I, Oh my goodness. I, you know what? I got uh, I gotta go. Uh, this is rough. <laughs> That's pain to you right now. This is rough. I'm gonna go with Rondo, man. I'm sorry, I gotta I gotta go with Rondo. I just you know, he's been, you know, a, 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 the best player on the Celtics the, the past couple of years in the playoffs. I mean, we saw the last when you know, when everybody was holding the last time they played Miami where he had that forty four point game and he was just we saw Rondo shooting threes. He's like, hey, who Rondo is this? <laughs> you know, he does it all, and he probably has more heart than anybody in the league. And David Ortiz is just too inconsistent for me, especially these days. You know what I mean? So I got, I got, I got to go with Rondo. I think this one was pretty clear cut that it was Tom Brady. <laughs> um, Rondo is, you know, the best player on the Celtics by far, especially since Pierce and Garnett left. But he's not the person that you give the ball to take the last shot. It was usually Pierce. So Pierce, if anything, was clutch. The, the, the question is, um, the question I believe says clutch, which is fourth quarter or third period if you're talking about hockey or ninth inning if you're talking about baseball. Yeah, but and clutch is not, it's not just about offenses. It's a combination of things, defense, being able to handle the ball in the fourth quarter and set up the, the, for that shot to be to be made as well. All right, well, fourth quarter touchdowns and everything. Uh, you know, Tom Brady, he had one recently. Um, I, I don't know Rajon Rondo as the game-winning shot. Yeah, he's handling the ball, and he, you know, it's not even a great assist or anything that. He also played with, uh, in the Super Bowl where he kind of overthrew Wes Welker there, which was a clutch moment. All right, well, he also has a long career with three Super Bowls. And please stop well, uh, making me defend Tom Brady. This is tough well, enough listen, as it is. I said if this had been five years ago, I would go with Tom Brady hands down. All right, but, well. So as of, as of now, currently, he hasn't. You know, had it doesn't say before. which is the well, most clutch even right even now. Even it even says even which star, Boston star, is more clutch. And you have Ortiz well, out I mean, there, who's who talking, you just said. Why would we be looking at this from? from I'm just, from I'm just. You're talking this? about the Boston right now, historic at, star. I mean, if you threw Larry Bird's name in there or something, you might as well. It doesn't say. The last two, the matter of fact, the last four years in the playoffs. Tom Brady hasn't been that clutch. And I still game. don't see Rajon Rondo, even this season, being the guy to go to for the game-winning shot and being well, that clutch last minute. The shot, so it's definitely going to be... It's probably, they're probably going to have Green out. take it. He's going to maybe, maybe pass it to Green, and he doesn't even do the inbounds pass either for those game-winning shots. So clutch, I don't see Rondo or Rondo in the category. Got to go with Tom Brady. Yeah, as a whole, I'm, I'm going to have to go with uh, Statman on that one. Um... 
Rajon Rondo, great player, you know, great setup man and all that. But um, you know, Tom too cool was just he just he just kinda put himself out there a little bit more than the than the other guy. So I'm about to get into the stat, man. Last question, last question. Over or under forty percent of the Giants finish the season with a better record than the Jets. I hate this question. <laughs> As he wears the Giants jersey, guys. <laughs> As they sit at oh, Goose Egg man. and oh, I, I mean Goose Egg and six. I gotta say under. It's you know they, the the Jets have three wins. The Giants have zero. Uh, the Jets will probably finish eight and eight on a positive, optimistic note. If the Giants finish seven and nine, they could still possibly, you know make the playoffs and you possibly even win it all like as the most optimistic I could go but at the same time the Jets I see as more of a chance of finishing at 500 with the easier division they have the Patriots against them uh, but an easier schedule as well the Giants got to go up against the Packers and uh, the Seahawks still this year um, I just I got to say under. It kills me, but I got to say under. <laughs> oh. Damn, sad. I can't even believe you would you take it there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say over. It's 40%. Um, it's the Jets. Geno Smith is, is not that good. And the Giants, they, 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 they're going to they're gonna start to, uh, to bounce back. Their schedule softens up a, a little bit, whereas... The Jets' next three games, they're losing, but. Well, yeah, they got they got they got the Patriots followed by Cincinnati on the road, then the Saints. That's the next then they three go games. on the road to play Buffalo and Baltimore. Well, Buffalo or Baltimore, are not really anything to talk about. <laughs> but I got I think I think they I think they 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 they, they will. You started drinking the Kool Aid, and I would like to let you know that you were wrong. I don't have them winning no more than five games this year. I'm sorry. I just, I just don't see it happening right now. I think Eli's down right now. He's blaming, he's putting a lot of blame on himself or whatever, and 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 he 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 wants to be that leader, to lead these guys to the promised land, but they're just not doing it. I just don't see it happening. And I, and, and they already what have three wins for the season, so what they, three more games, and I, and I think they're still gonna have more wins than the Giants for this With year. With a unanimous decision. Three nothing victory, <laughs> stat winner, and new champion of the world, Mark <laughs> the Stat Man Scavenger. Don't hype, man. Okay, okay, Timothy Bradley. <laughs> All right. Oh, it is hot. A little, hot. little, little excitement in there for for that victory. Even though I had to Woo! go against my Giants and, and, and the shame of them being 0-6 right now. Five games, guys. And the shame of the Rangers not being able to take a victory either. Um, winning the first game against the Kings and just really not showing much of anything else afterwards. I'm still trying to stay uh, faithful. Rick Nash on the injured reserve too, so... Things not looking good for the Rangers. It's still early in the season. There's a long season to play. One and four in hockey is not as bad, considering you still have 77 more games <laughs> as opposed to in football. So um, I'm still staying a little bit confident with that. NBA season is not upon us yet. The preseason is almost over. Very excited to, for this upcoming NBA season. Rajan Rondo, uh, who we spoke about on Shot for Shot, is uh, pretty confident that he's 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 the man on the team, which is no question about that. Still thinking that his team is uh, going to make the playoffs. He's drinking some Kool Aid as well. Yes, I mean, I lost the shot. Last I lost the Shot for Shot question uh, this past Sunday because Face Facts and Trip Young kind of felt that they would, uh, you know, they would make the playoffs because the the sixth, seventh, and eighth seed is a little open. But yeah. I still think. Detroit has really made some moves in the offseason. I think Philadelphia is going to take that Gosh, spot. Man. And um, I forgot who else I mentioned. But Philadelphia? Yeah. Who, have, who, who, really has who almost made the playoffs last year with almost nothing, too. Yeah, but. they also had Drew Holiday last year. Yeah. And, they, and all they got was the injury-prone New Orleans Noel. So 
So you went from one engine. I think I picked Atlanta engine, instead of Atlanta. Philadelphia and then changed it back up, but and you know. Atlanta, they don't have uh, Josh Smith anymore. I'm not saying that the Celtics, they have no chance of making the playoffs, but I think the question was one of those over or under 40% chances or something, and I, or the playoffs I, I, think, I think that it's less likely that they would have. But, I mean, aside from that, anything's possible. I mean, the only thing that really matters when the NBA season rolls back around is uh, Miami 3 feet, and that's the <laughs> rough thing that's going on with that. Yeah, will Situation. they? And you know, it's their chances are. Michael that, Beasley's right? staying out of trouble. Yeah, Michael Beasley's uh, staying out of trouble. Oh, Toronto is who I who I mentioned mm. before. Toronto came up uh, a okay. lot since last year. They did. Well, I mean, they had the Rudy. <laughs> I mean, they had the Rudy Gay trade, and they started they started playing better the second half of the season. But at that point, yeah, it was a little too late. Towards the, towards the end of that, that too. Yeah, but overall, I'm, I'm telling you, uh, Toronto is going to take one of the one of the last three playoff spots. I mean, considering I we're, we were, we've were we already given yeah. away the first six. You got Miami, Chicago. Um, both New York Both team. New York teams, Brooklyn and New York. Indiana. Uh, Indiana yeah. And um, who else? I mean, that's the, that's the, those are the did, I, did I even say the Heat? I don't know. Uh, those are those are the, are the guaranteed spots. Mm -hmm. Those five, and then it's kind of a toss this, up this down there. Left. Yeah. Oh yeah, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so the last three spots. Three yeah. spots left. Um, I mean, Cleveland got a lot better if they can stay healthy. I can see them maybe getting one of those spots. Um, and again, that's like you know, the Celtics could could get get back to the playoffs. They they still have some players in there. Rondo is still you know a top five point guard. But he's coming back from an injury as well. Well, I mean, so is Derrick Rose. Yeah. yeah. So, and they're coming back from similar injuries. But, but, but we saw that the Bulls go a little deep in the playoffs last year without Derrick Rose also, so. Yeah, I mean, they were first place in the league with Derrick Rose, with a healthy Derrick Rose. They made some adjustments the since then. The You're right. All right, well, they aside from that, um, you know, switching over to baseball, we do have that matchup going on. Verlander is six straight uh, strikeouts at his tied a single season uh post a single game postseason record and uh verlander uh now has uh five postseason games with 10 or more strikeouts if he strikes out 10 today he'd break the record he shares with cliff lee randy johnson and bob gibson randy. so uh Verlander is uh, doing his thing over there, uh, and it's, it's good because it's against the Red Sox, so we'll, we'll, uh, <laughs> us Yankee fans could definitely appreciate that. Um, the enemy of my enemy is my friend, I guess is the saying. So, yeah. um, Something like that. But we're, we're going to get into this day in sports history before uh, we wrap things up. Uh, in this day in sports history, in 1933, Philadelphia Eagles play the first NFL game and lose to the Giants 56 to nothing. Yeah, throw something in there to make you guys 56 feel good. to <laughs> nothing. And, uh, yeah, so. <laughs> this very day in 1979, the New York Knickerbockers retired the second number 10, Walt Fraser. Walt Clyde Fraser. And in 1989, my man, Wayne Gretzky, passes Gordy Howes as an all time top scorer. We had some greats in New York. It's just too bad none of them are here now. <laughs> you know? I think Walt Frazier and uh, oh, but Craig Yankees Sager dress are alike. Looking at looking at bringing in uh, Carlos Beltran mm. next season. I saw that. So Bronx Beltran. Hopefully, hopefully oh, Beltran can, Bronx, can, whatever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hopefully they can uh, they can make that happen. That'd be a nice little pickup. You know, uh, we we do have time for one more fan mail question. Uh, it's regarding uh, boxing. Jeremy from Detroit writes. Would you guys rather see Bradley versus Mayweather or Bradley fight the winner of Pacquiao, Rios, then face Mayweather if he could win that bout? Uh, we kind of touched on this before, I guess. My opinion would be I'd rather see him fight Mayweather, even if he loses, but what do you think? I'd rather Pacquiao fight Mayweather first and get that over with before they're all, <laughs> both in the old folks' home, but... Two fights here, right? RealfansRealTalk.com is the website. We're here every Tuesday, 5.30 p.m., Bronxnet Television, and every Sunday, 7.30 p.m. Check out RealfansRealTalk.com to like us on Facebook and everything. For Trip Young and Sean Fontaine, I'm Mark the Stuntman. 
Skavich, uh, thank you for joining us and have a good night. Real Fears, Real Talk.com. I'm out. Real Fears.